85% of hiring managers are now turning to freelancers for specialized skills and are realizing a gold mine of benefits with this approach. They are slashing costs by only paying for the work done without the overhead of full-time employees like office space, transport, food, and other costs. I am Daniel and I help entry-level freelancers upskill and earn online through teaching in-demand skills and sharing knowledge about online freelance opportunities. In my last video, I shared and ranked four of my top seven freelance skills that could spark your breakthrough into this exciting freelance industry. If you missed that first part, click the card on the top right of this video to catch up. In this video, I am completing the set with three more skills that could level up your freelance game. Let's dive in. Moving on to the fifth skill, that is social media management and marketing. Social media is a powerhouse for businesses to increase brand awareness, customer engagement, and even generate direct sales. Tasks involved in social media management include setting up client profiles, scheduling posts, publishing posts, running ads, generating reports on growth and metrics like likes, engagement, and so on. I would score the learning curve of social media management and marketing at 3.5 out of 5. Moving on to the next criteria of what you need to get started. Ideally, you would need a reliable PC and laptop for the best results. In terms of software, tools like Buffer.com, Planaloy, Hootsuite, Meet Edgar, Later.com can really up your game drastically. Many of these have free trials and free versions that you can take full advantage of. I would score what you need to get started at a 3.5 out of 5. Going into market demand, this is the criteria that I'll be using. If more than 5 projects have been posted in the past 24 hours, I will give it a score of 5. Heading over to Upwork, we are going to count the number of jobs posted in the last 24 hours. One thing to take note of, this is the time this job was posted and we are going to count how many jobs relating to social media marketing and management were posted in the last 24 hours. I have my social media keywords entered, so I'm going to go ahead and count the number of jobs relating to social media that were posted in the last 24 hours. So this is one social media marketer, this is two, this is three, I will skip over this one because it has an additional role of customer support. I will also skip this one over because it has the content creator part. This is four. I will skip this one because it has SMS. I will also skip it because it has Google Ads. So this is five, this is six, this is seven, this is eight, this is nine, and maybe 10 and 11. So this is posted seven hours ago. So all these jobs were posted less than seven hours ago and they still continue. So with that, social media management and marketing will have a score of 5 out of 5 when it comes to market demand. Moving on to competition, we still are going to be using Upwork as our source of data. If there are less than 5 proposals per post, I will give it a score of 5, meaning that the competition is low. And on the other side, if there are more than 50 proposals per post, I'll give it a score of 1. Let's head over to Upwork. When it comes to competition, we shall be looking at this metric, proposals. As you can see, these jobs were posted recently and they haven't been proposed yet. So we shall consider that as less than 5. So this is less than 5, 1. This is less than 5, 2. This is 15 to 20. This is 10 to 15. This is less than 5. This is less than 5. This is 20 to 50. This is 10 to 15. This is 20 to 50. This is 5 to 10. This is 10 to 15. This is 5 to 10. This is 15 to 20. After tallying up the number of proposals on Upwork, social media management and marketing has an average number of 10 to 15 proposals per job post on Upwork and that gives it a score of 4 out of 5 when it comes to competition. The last criteria on social media management and marketing is income potential and we will be using the same criteria of Upwork. We shall calculate the hourly rate and if it averages over $100 per hour, it will be a score of 5 out of 5. Down there, as you can see, if it is less than $5 per hour, it will be on a score of 1. So let's head over into Upwork and find out how it ranks when it comes to income potential. So here you have your social media marketing. 
the number we shall look at is this one this is the hourly rate we shall be using the hourly rate and not a project rate or a fixed rate so here on social media marketer the hourly rate is three to four dollars per hour so we're going to be taking the upper end of the side which is four dollars this is four dollars per hour this is 48 dollars per hour six dollars per hour this is six here we have 49 dollars per hour here we have 50, 15 dollars per hour here we have 15 as well here we have 3.5 here we have $129 per hour. That is our sample size when it comes to income potential. When you tally up the numbers for income potential of social media management and marketing on Upwork, the average hourly rate is $33 per hour, and that will rank at three out of five when it comes to income potential. Rounding off the overall score of social media management and marketing is four out of five. Moving on to the sixth skill, and that is podcast audio and video editing. Podcast audio editing involves adding intros and outros, deleting unpleasant noises, cutting out unnecessary and repetitive sections, enhancing audio quality, adding music and sound effects, and ensuring smooth transitions between segments. Editing video podcasts involves adding B-roll, that is stock images and videos, visual adjustments, and audio-video synchronization. The goal of podcast audio editing is to produce a polished, engaging, and professional final product that conveys the intended message to the audience. The learning curve of podcast audio and video editing will vary depending on your prior experience in audio and video editing, as well as the complexity of the content you're editing. While beginners can pick up basic editing skills fairly quickly, becoming proficient and producing high-quality end product may take significant practice and experience. Learning curve outscore the skill of podcast editing at three out of five. Moving on to what you need, a decent computer or laptop with good specifications is really a must have for the best productivity. You will also need sufficient, reliable and fast internet connections because sometimes podcast audio and video files are large and require a large amount of data. In terms of software, free tools like DaVinci Resolve and Audacity are good enough to get started. Premium tools like Descript can make your job easier. I would rate the requirements to get started in podcast audio and video editing at a 2.5 out of 5. Next up is market demand for podcast editing. You will be using Upwork to determine if the market demand for podcast editors is high or low. If there are more than 5 projects posted on Upwork in 24 hours regarding podcast, video, or audio editing, I will give it a score of 5. And if there is no job posted in 4 days, I will give it a rating of 1. So let's head over to Upwork and get some numbers. So we're going to count how many projects were posted in the last 24 hours. Here you can see the time the project was posted. So this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this was posted yesterday and so it is now in the 48 hour range this is four this is five and this is six this is seven this is eight this is nine so more than five were posted in the space of 48 hours so i will give podcast editing a score of four out of five Next is competition for podcast video and editing work if there is average less than five proposals per post I'll give it a score of 5. If there's average of more than 50 proposals per podcast editing job, I'll give it a score of 1 out of 5. Let's head over to Upwork and get rolling with the numbers. Here is the first one. It has 20 to 50 proposals, which is quite high. Here is 5 to 10 proposals, 15 to 20, 10 to 15, 5 to 10, 5, 20 to 50. Here is 10 to 15 20 to 50, this is 20 to 50, this is 20 to 50, this is 10 to 15, 10 to 15, 20 to 50, 15 to 20, 20 to 50. After tallying up the numbers, the average number of proposals per job post about podcast audio and video editing is 20 to 50, and that will give it a score of 2 out of 5 when it comes to competition. The last criteria is income potential. How much can you possibly earn from podcast audio or video editing? We will be using the same criteria. We are given 5 to 10 posted projects on Upwork. If the average is more than $100 per hour, we will give it a score of 5. If the average is less than $5 per hour per post, 
I'll give it a score of 1. Let's head over to Upwork and get to find out the average number paid. So this is $30 per hour. This is $10 per hour. This is $25 per hour. We're going to skip this one, the interval hourly rates. This is $5 per hour. This is $15 per hour. This is 15. This is 20. This is 20. This is 10. This is 25. This is 30. This is $30 per hour. This is a budget, so we skip over it. This is $30 per hour. There you have it with the numbers. I've done the numbers and the average hourly rate paid for podcast audio and video editing is $18 per hour. And that will rank at a score of 2 out of 5. So rounding off, the overall score of podcast editing is 3 out of 5. Lastly is email copywriting. Email copy is the text written in an email to convey a specific message to the target reader. It's crafted to grab the reader's attention, deliver important information, and spur the reader on to take a specific action, for example, by clicking a link to purchase a product or service, or to listen to a podcast episode, a YouTube video, or sign up for a webinar, and so on. How easy or how difficult is it to learn this skill? At the very basic level, you need to have a solid grasp of the English language and syntax. But even more than that, Good email copy consists of the following. One, a clear and concise subject line. Two, uh, personalization. That means that you are tailoring the needs and interests of your email to that particular reader. And also, it could help to mention their name. Three, you have to communicate the value or benefits of the call to action and the email. You have to have engaging content that is concise, relevant, and easy to read. And last but not least, you have to have a strong and compelling call to action that directs the reader to what you want them to do next. This skill can be easily learned, but it does require ongoing learning and practice and also adapting to different audiences and changing trends. Learning curve of email copywriting, I would rate it at 3 out of 5. Moving on to what you need, any gadget that is laptop, PC, phone, tablet that supports a word processor like Google Docs, uh, Microsoft Word and email is good enough to get you started on this skill. For that, I would rank what you need to get started email copywriting at a 4.5 out of 5. Next is market demand. We'll use the same criteria, that is number of projects posted in 24 hours and X amount of time on Upwork. We are in Upwork here and we want to look at the time. This is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, this is six, and uh, this is seven. Seven posted in the last 13 hours. It will pass our threshold of five projects posted in 24 hours. The score is 5 out of 5 when it comes to market demand for email copywriting. Next is competition. How many people are proposing per post? We shall use also Upwork. If the average is less than 5 proposals per post, it will, it will have a score of 5. And if the average is more than 50 proposals per post, it will have a score of 1. We shall be looking at this metric, less than 5 proposals. So we're going to start from here, less than 5. 5 to 10, 5 to 10, 5 to 10, 5 to 10, less than 5, uh, 20 to 50, uh, 10 to 15. So email copywriter for spiritual or astrology based soulmate sketch service. Interesting. This is 5 to 10 proposals. Uh, copywriter needed for email, 20 to, 50, 20 to 50. Creative email copywriter for course creators and coaches, 20 to 50. Lead generation email copywriter, yes, this will count as well. So 10 to 15, you will get email copywriting. Yeah, this person needs an email copywriter. So that's 10 to 15. Although such kinds of jobs, you have to be careful, especially when payment is unverified and there's this sketchy writing. But we shall give it the benefit of the doubt and include it. 10 to 15, email copywriter familiar with electronic music production. 20 to 50 proposals. And lastly, 5 to 10. So there you have it with email copywriter and the petition on number of proposals per post. After turning up the numbers, given the sample size we have seen on Upwork, the average number of proposals per post on Upwork is in the range of 10 to 15 proposals per email copywriter post. That will give the competition for email writer jobs a score of four out of five based on that criteria. Lastly is the income potential for email copywriter work. And we're going to take the hourly rate 
and this is the criteria. Heading over to Upwork, we're going to look at this metric here, hourly rate. This one in particular is $300 per hour. Here is $30 per hour. Here is 50, this is 50, this is 50. Here it is $100 per hour. Here is $25 per hour. This is $50 per hour. And I'm going to stop there. After doing the numbers, the average hourly rate for email copywriting on Upwork, given the sample size of 12 jobs that I've looked at, is $48 per hour. And that is within the range of $40 to $50. And that is a solid 3.5 out of five when it comes to income potential. Therefore, given this criteria, the overall score for email copywriter is four out of five. There you have it. We have covered seven skills that could level up your freelance game. Which skill has stood out for you? I would really, really love to know. Let me know in the comments. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell icon so that you don't miss a thing. Thank you for watching until the end. Keep hustling, stay curious, and see you in the next video.